Okay, everybody, let's talk about economic equality. Um, one of the things that you look at when you look at different countries is not just how much they make, which would be a measure of their gross domestic product or GDP, but GDP, excuse me, but how that income is distributed across their population. So, for example, a country that makes a lot of money, like China, may not have a very equal distribution of that wealth, and that means that some people are very rich while some people are very poor. The Lawrence Curve and Gini Index are ways to look at this. In microeconomics, this may sound like it's a little more in the macro range of things, but we think it's important because it shows externalities where it might be important for the government to step in and help regulate the distribution of income by raising taxes or causing transfer payments and that sort of thing. Um, so some macroeconomists find this particularly important when looking at social equality. The Lawrence Curve and its derivation index, the Gini Index, are important places uh, to look at measures of this equality. The Lawrence Curve measures income equality across um, a country's population by looking at what the lowest 10% of the population makes in terms of a percent of the income. The Lawrence Curve is the picture of perfect equality. So 10% of the population makes 10% of the income, 20% of the population makes 20% of the income, and so on all the way up to 100%. Well, as you might imagine, real countries don't work this way. So here I have country X's curve, and that would be the curve here bounding between area A and area B. And in country X, 10% of the population only makes 2 to 3% of the country's income, while 30% of the population makes only 10% of the population's income. When you look at 50% of the population, it's 20% of the country's income, and so on and so on. So it changes all the way so up. When you look at the Lawrence curve, the larger the size of area A is, the less equal your country is. So the Gini index is an index measuring income inequality, and the way you measure that is by taking area A, sort of the bite that your country's curve takes out of this perfectly equal area, plus area B, the um, over area A plus area B, the entirety of what would go under the Lawrence curve. However big the piece of area A is, the less equal your country is going to be. So the closer your equation is to perfect inequality, the closer it will be to 1, which means that area A would cover all of this area and be almost equal to the area that it's over. The closer that it is to perfect equality, the smaller this area A is, and your income inequality would be minimized. If you had a perfectly equal area, the Lawrence curve scenario, area A is going to be equal to zero, which would be over area A zero plus O oh, a hundred, then zero over zero plus a hundred would of course give you zero. So that would be perfect equality. And to take a look at what that means in the world, let's take a look at the Gini index here according to the World Bank, an excellent source of this information. Our most recent Gini index will be 2007 to 2011 and you can see here that the United States is closer to 27.8 um, pretty white, a little bit pinker than, say, Canada, and the countries that are very red, Central and East Asia in particular. A little bit of irony to me in this map that they colored uh, the less equal countries red, and you notice that they overlap with countries that have dabbled in communism. So uh, maybe the World Bank is trying to make a point about how communism worked for them. I'm not sure, but I thought that was a little ironic. Notice, too, though, your Gini index, the real numbers aren't anywhere close to zero and one. Realistically, your index runs from 27.8 to 58. So the closer you are, if you're in the 50s, you're extremely unequal. If you're in the, the 30s, you're pretty equal. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what these countries are dealing with, and hopefully that helped.